Welcome to part two in our glycolysis series. Today we will be investigating one of the regulatory mechanisms that control the first enzymatic step in the glycolysis process, the hexokinase activity. Isozymes, if you will recall from the last semester, are proteins that are encoded by different genes but perform the same function. They can have different enzyme kinetics, expression patterns in different tissues, have different post-translational modifications, and bind with different allosteric effectors. This affords the body to have differential control over the same processes in different locations within the body. Within vertebrates, there are four important hexokinase isozymes that vary in subcellular locations and kinetic parameters. This allows the differential phosphorylation of hexoses in the body with respect to different local conditions and physiological functions. They are designated hexokinases 1, 2, 3, and 4. All of the hexokinases can use multiple hexoses as substrates in addition to glucose. These include mannose, fructose, and 2-deoxyglucose. Hexokinase 4 is often referred to as glucokinase and is specific to the liver and pancreas. Recall that glucose 6-phosphate has several potential fates within the body. It can be used as an energy source through the pathways of glycolysis and aerobic respiration. Short bursts of anaerobic respiration can also be sustained in animals that convert pyruvate into lactate. Glucose 6-phosphate can also be dephosphorylated in the liver and released back into the bloodstream to maintain homeostatic balance. Within this process, the pancreas uses glucose 6-phosphate as a sensor to determine when to secrete insulin and glucagon. The glucose 6-phosphate can also serve as a building block for anabolic processes. It can be converted to ribose through the pentose phosphate pathway, where it will be used in the construction of nucleotide monomers. It can also be used for the formation of hexosamines used in proteoglycan and glycoprotein formation. Now let's take a look at the different isozymes of hexokinase in a little more detail. Hexokinase 1, or HK1, is found widely distributed throughout the body and is the main form expressed in brain tissue and red blood cells. In brain cells, this protein is localized to the mitochondria. This co-localization aids in the efficient coupling of glycolysis with the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation pathways inside the mitochondria. It also ties the activity of HK1 with oxidative phosphorylation and energy load as HK1 preferentially uses mitochondrially derived ATP in its reaction mechanism. Hexokinase's association with the mitochondria also has a cellular protective effect, reducing the potential for programmed cell death or apoptosis to occur. We will explore this role of the hexokinases in a later lecture. Red blood cells, on the other hand, are highly differentiated cells with a very short lifespan. They are replaced in humans approximately every two weeks. Red blood cells are enucleated and do not have mitochondria, and thus only generate ATP through the process of glycolysis. The HK1 protein is free-floating in the cytoplasm in this system. HK1 has a low Km, meaning that it has high affinity for glucose, and is active at low substrate concentrations. It is also inhibited by the product glucose 6-phosphate in the process of negative feedback inhibition. Essentially, you do not want to waste time and energy making more than you need. Low to moderate levels of free inorganic phosphate can overcome this negative feedback inhibition. Hexokinase 1 and hexokinase 2 are expressed in skeletal muscle, heart muscle, and other insulin-sensitive tissues. While it is thought that HK1 is providing a predominantly catabolic role for the use of glucose 6-phosphate in energy production, 
hexokinase 2 may play a more pertinent role in anabolic processes, providing glucose 6-phosphate for conversion to glucose 1-phosphate and subsequent utilization in glycogenesis. Both HK1 and HK2 are localized to the outer membrane of the mitochondria. However, while 95% of HK1 is associated with the mitochondria, only about 70% of HK2 is associated with the remaining HK2 fractioning with the cytosolic proteins. This could help to explain the heightened role of HK2 in anabolic glycogenesis processes within skeletal muscle that is not found in brain tissue, only expressing the HK1 enzyme. HK2 is also often overexpressed in tumor cells, where it is associated with higher mortality rates. It also has been linked with the processes of metastasis and with the development of drug resistance. Similar to HK1, HK2 also has a low KM and is inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate, although this inhibition is not released by the presence of inorganic phosphate. Not a lot is known about the functions of hexokinase 3. It may be an inactive gene duplication or remnant. Under basal conditions, it is not expressed to appreciable levels in any major tissues, and in studies on its biological activity, it is inhibited by glucose at physiological concentrations. However, there are some studies that suggest it may be expressed during cellular stress responses, such as hypoxia, although its function in these types of responses are not currently understood. Hexokinase 4, or glucokinase, is specifically expressed within the liver and pancreas. HK4 is cytoplasmic, and not tethered to the mitochondria. Activity within the pancreas serves as a sensor for the release of insulin and in the liver for the production of glucose 6-phosphate that will fuel glycogen production. HK4 has a higher KM than HK1 and HK2. Thus, it does not work efficiently at low concentrations of glucose. However, It is not inhibited by the product glucose 6-phosphate. Thus, it will continue to make glucose 6-phosphate even when levels are high. This helps to explain the high levels of glycogen that are stored within liver tissue, but not elsewhere in the body. This also ensures that the sensor system in the pancreas will accurately read blood glucose levels. The four isozymes of hexokinase share high homology with one another and appear to have arisen from gene duplication events. The left-hand panel shows the linear protein domains of the different hexokinase isozymes. Both HK1 and HK2 contain an N-terminal domain that localizes the protein to the mitochondrial membrane. HK1, 2, and 3 all contain two repeating catalytic domains in the N and C terminals. However, mutations in the N-terminal domain of HK1 and HK3 render them inactive. They are shown in red above. Both catalytic domains in HK2 retain activity. HK4, glucokinase, is the most truncated isozyme, only containing the C-terminal catalytic domain. The lower right-hand diagram shows the ribbon diagram of HK4. Upstream promoter regions of HK4, not shown in this diagram, also differ, allowing for controlled expression in the liver and pancreas. Feedback inhibition of HK1 and HK2 occur through the N-terminal catalytic domain. The upper diagram on the right shows an HK1 dimer complexed with an ATP analog, glucose, glucose 6-phosphate, and magnesium ions. HK1 dimerizes when concentrations of the inhibitor, glucose 6-phosphate, are high enough. Dimerization reduces the biological activity of the enzyme in brain tissue. 
Dimerization of HK1 can be reversed in the presence of low levels of inorganic phosphate. In the above diagram, hexokinase 4 is used as a model for understanding enzyme conformation during the reaction. Hexokinases change shape by induced fit upon substrate binding. Hexokinase has a large induced fit motion that closes over the substrates ATP and xylose. The binding sites are shown in blue, substrates in black, and the magnesium cofactor in yellow. In summary, the isozyme expression patterns of hexokinases differentially regulate the fate of glucose within those tissues. Within brain tissue and red blood cells, where only HK1 is present, glucose is predominantly used in the glycolytic pathway for energy production. In muscle tissue, the presence of HK2 allows for increased use of glucose for the formation of glycogen. HK4 expression in the pancreas and the liver allow for homeostatic regulation of blood glucose levels.